Hey guys, okay, we're going to finish up our topic 12 today, talking about topic 12.2, nuclear physics. A lot of what we covered in SL, uh, you'll need as a background for this. Uh, for instance, I remember they've, um, Geiger and Marsden were actually working with Rutherford to shoot I don't know where that came from, where they were working to shoot particles through uh, gold. It was really gold, thin gold foil, and that's how they came up with the um, structure of the um, of the atom. Or the there's a nucleus and then uh, electrons going around it. All right, I just wanted to put this up here so that you could uh, remember. It was, let me see, I have this. There we go. Let me, let me get it back up here. There we go. All right. All right. So today we're going to finish up talking about uh, topic 12, quantum and nuclear physics, by talking about nuclear physics. Talk about all the quantum stuff in the last few uh, presentations. This time, we're just gonna talk about nuclear physics and a lot of what you learned in SL is important here. So just uh, go back and look at topic seven and refresh yourself with that. But I wanted to put this slide up here to show you uh, a reminder of how we came up with the structure of the atom by shooting alpha particles through gold foil and watching how they were reflected off. And the vast majority of them came, came flying through. A few of them came bouncing off at different angles. And from that, they could figure out that there's a solid uh, nucleus within the atom, and then far out from it are electrons floating around. Okay. So once we figured out what the shape of an atom was. And we, we using quantum physics, we have calculated the radius of an atom. What's the radius of uh, the nucleus of an atom? So again, they would fire alpha particles at, an, at the nucleus of an atom. And because it's got two positive charges in it, uh, and all of these positive charges in the nucleus, there would be a Coulomb repulsion and it would come in with a certain velocity, certain kinetic energy, get close to the nucleus before those forces repulsed it and pushed it back. Okay, so we use the Coulomb equation for the energy that is experienced by this uh, um, alpha particle as it gets closer to that nucleus. Okay, now at this moment, at R naught, the nuclear, uh, the alpha particle will stop just for an instant right here before it takes off back. So at that moment, the uh, kinetic energy of this is equal to zero, right? It says so right here. The kinetic energy is equal to zero. So in our equation, we have the over, get grief, we have the overall energy. I can't underline it because it's, there we go. The overall energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy. Well, this is zero. So our potential energy is given by this, by the Coulomb uh, energy. And the charges here are the protons, right? A proton has a charge of E, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And the alpha particle has two of them. So it's two times E, and whatever nucleus that we're firing at here, whatever that nucleus is, it has a certain number of protons, whatever number of protons it is. If it's a carbon atom, it has 12, right? 
And so we would substitute 12 in there. And so, uh, and this is the, this is that minimum distance radius that, that we're looking at right here. And so when we uh, look at this, we put this out, we end up with the energy that this is experiencing right here, right there, is 2z times ke squared over r naught. Okay. All right. So what do we what do we do with that? We can actually use that to figure out what the radius or get a good idea of what the radius of that nucleus is. You'll you notice that the alpha particle does not come in and actually touch it. So we're not getting the exact nucleus size of uh, this uh, nucleus. Uh, so let's just give, use this to give us an estimate. All right, so um, the energy of this, let's see, we've got this as starts out with initial energy of 2.75 mega electron volts. All right, so that is the kinetic energy out here at infinity, far enough away that the uh, Coulomb repulsion forces don't affect it. And so that's what our potential energy, our maximum potential energy is. Well, as we know, when it gets in here and stops, all of that potential energy has been converted in, I'm sorry, this is kinetic energy. All that potential energy, uh, kinetic energy has been converted into potential energy at this point. And, and uh, so that is equal, the potential energy is equal to 2.75 mega electron volts. We need to change those electron volts into joules. So we multiply by our conversion factor and we end up with 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus 13th joules. So that's the energy that's going on here. And so we know this equation that we had just derived on the previous slide and we can use it to solve for that all right we know we know this uh, we know that we are talking about a silicon nucleus silicon nucleus that has 14 protons in it so we can substitute in 14 this is a constant this is a constant this is coulomb's constant charge so we substitute those in. 2 times 14 times Coulomb's constant times the charge squared uh, divided by the energy. And we get an estimated radius of that nucleus at 1.46 1. 1. Times 10 to the minus 14th meters. It's actually pretty straightforward. You just have to remember that um, all the kinetic energy is getting converted into the potential energy at this distance, and the rest is all constants. Okay, now then, if we want to find it more accurately, we can use. Um, this equation. We're not going to derive this equation. You just have to take IB's word for it that this is correct. I don't know why they would mislead you. And we'll universally use R0 as 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15th meters. Okay, so that's that's what we're using. Oops, I went backwards. All right. So using this, find the radius of a gold nucleus. So this is the radius that we're looking for. This is R0, which is given right here and will always be given to you. If it's not given to you, this is what the value is. So you need to know that, but just know they'll probably be giving it to you. Thus, the radius of the gold nucleus is, and we substitute everything in, this is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15th, A, is the uh, atomic number 197 raised to the one third and that gives us 6.98 times 10 to the minus 15th meters much uh, much closer to being accurate 
the size. Okay. So here's an ex here's a uh, sample problem. Show that the density of a gold nucleus is about 2.3 times 10 to the 17th kilograms per cubic meters. All right, so we're going to use the equation. This is density equals mass divided by volume. All right, we have to derive. We're going to we're going to have the mass of the proton. Uh, we're going to have the mass the volume. We're going to need to calculate that. So let's see what we got. So the mass of the nucleus is given by pretty much on average the uh, number of protons divided by the uh, rest mass of a proton. And the volume of the nucleus is given by 4 thirds pi r squared because we look at the electron, I'm sorry, we look at the atom as being a sphere. So we use the uh, volume of a sphere. And since r third, we have r third, if we look at our previous equation, we look at our r equals r naught times a to the one third. Well, if we take r third here and we raise this into a third, we get r naught third to a times a. Much easier to deal with and raising things to the one third. And so we substitute that in and we get the volume is equal to four thirds pi r naught cubed over uh, times a times the, the atomic number okay so substitute all of that in to our density equation and here's our representation of mass given up here here is our representation of the volume given right here and you notice that the a's cancel out the atomic number cancel out. And that means that every atom has this radius, which is an interesting, or I'm sorry, has this density, which makes sense because it's all protons and neutrons and they're all the same regardless of where you are in a nucleus. It's all protons and, and neutrons, so they should have the same density. And so we substitute in what we have, the um, mass of a proton times 4 thirds pi. This was the R naught that was given us raised to the third. And we end up with a density of 2.3 times 10 to the uh, 17th kilograms per cubic meter. 